It's time to meet our birthday people on the dance floor. Now hit me with that fast beat! <laughs> You know him from NSYNC, but this super dad is joining forces with Great Clips to help parents get ready for the first day of school. It's Joey Fatone. How are you? Yes, I am fantastic. You know, when you as you get older, you you tend to grow up and have kids, and when you grow up and have kids, you want to, you know, do things for them and make them uh, feel comfortable. So yeah, get them get them a great haircut. That's actually like kind of that. kind of what goes hand in hand there. <laughs> how's your summer been so far? I know we're going to talk about getting ready for school, but how's summer going? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, you know, with the whole summer, you know, been touring with with AJ uh, on the weekends, which has been great, and then the weekdays, which has been really cool during the summer. Literally, I just got home uh, Sunday, and I'm leaving again tomorrow uh, to be back out. But I was with my youngest daughter, Chloe, uh, who's actually in the in the commercial with me. She, uh, we went to New York. We saw like four shows in three days, and then we flew to California and went through. They have a Disney has this Pixar. I don't know, fest thing, if yeah. you will. And they have all these different kind of foods that correspond with the Pixar movie. So she wanted to do that. So I was like, hey, for the summer break, for your summer, she did really good in school. I'm like, well, let's go. So we ran around. So it's been great. Oh, I'm so jealous. Ran around the parks. If you will. I, I'm, a, I'm a theater person, so I'm jealous that you got to see some shows. And I'm a huge Disney fan. So The awesome. Outsiders is effing amazing. Oh, I love that. Great to hear that. All right. So you're working with Great Clips on a back to school campaign that is centered around the slang their kids are saying and helping parents better understand what they're saying, all while getting them to look great for their first day of school. Tell us a bit about the campaign yep. and why it's important. Yeah, I mean, again, well, yeah, for, for me, you know, it's, it's always important. Like, I guess when even relating for me when I was back in school, you know, uh, not having the fresh look or the fresh cut or maybe the nice outfit for the first day, you want to impress everybody. And it was always that nervousness of, of, of going into school. And I think, you know, I think it honestly, it does apply to, to my child as well, I think. And, and, and she's she is a, a little bit of a shy person, so to say. And I think, you know, helping her look good always, I think, helps kids, you know, feel good. You know, if you look good, you feel good and that kind of thing, and vice versa. And I think it's always interesting nowadays now, because back in the day for us and my age, it was, yo, that was mint. That was dope. Now it's that's Riz and no cap and, you know, beige flag. So I'm still learning these definitions of all this stuff because there's a whole bunch of stuff that my kid's doing with the tear and the, I don't even know what half the stuff is. <laughs> and I'm slowly learning what's going on. So, you know, it's, it's kind of fun where myself, great clips. And of course my daughter are kind of coming together with forces to basically show, Hey, listen, if you, if the adults like myself don't really know all the definitions, you can actually go and check those definitions out. Or, you know, talk to somebody at Great Clips that will actually know those terms and to kind of help you out. It's kind of a, a fun way to do it because it's true because some of these things that they're saying, I'm like, what are you talking about? Or what are you saying? <laughs> like, I don't even know. So I'm like, I need help. So that's why there's kind of like a dictionary as well on the website to check it out too, which is really cool. Yeah, it sounds like a really, really amazing opportunity for parents to learn because the words you were throwing out there is, I don't even understand. So I'm going to have to talk <laughs> I don't even have a kid. Now, you and your daughter had this amazing chemistry in the commercial. What was it like collaborating with Chloe and being on set shooting this commercial? Kind of funny because it's really the first time she's really starting to come out of her shell. Like I said, she is kind of a little bit of a quiet person. Or if she does the thing, she doesn't really show mom and dad a lot of the stuff. And now we've been seeing a lot of stuff. She's into like musical theater now. Mm -hmm. So to do this with her and to collab, I was almost a little bit like a stage dad, but I was trying not to be because I was kind of like, ah, let's just let her do it. But I was like, you know what? You need to smile more. I'm becoming that dad to where I didn't want to be, you know, but I was just kind of like, let her do her thing. And, and she did. She did great. She, I don't think she was, she really wasn't nervous at all. I think she, she did really, really good. Is it, it's fun to do stuff like that. I mean, I did it with my older daughter. My older one now is 23, which mm -hmm. is crazy. So, and she was like, she didn't like the acting so much, but for some reason, Chloe, my little one, she's, I think she's more of me in a sense. I so love I think that. this is kind of, it's going to be fun. Yeah. How much has your daughter taught you about kids these days? I think a bunch, really. Uh, you know, every once in a while I'm learning, like I said, I'm learning these terms, the terminologies on certain things. Or, you know, uh, there's a, a website thing called Discord that I never even knew about. That's some sort of thing for video games and then virtual reality, which are on the Oculus. So I'm learning a lot. It's, it's, it is very interesting because it's going at a very, very fast rate too, especially a lot of technology and phones and these different apps and stuff. And it's almost like, 
I'm starting to become the old person now where I'm like, what's that? How do you work that? But I'm also, like I said, trying to really be ahead of the game. So that's why, again, for me, you know, learning this terminology. And sometimes if I do not know, seriously, they have like a dictionary on uh, on Great Clips. You go on Great Clips uh, backslash back to school. You can actually see literally definitions of, of what they're talking about or how to decipher what the heck they're saying. <laughs> Has there been any terminology or lingo from like the 90s that you've thrown out and Chloe's like, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll say that's dope. She's like, what? Or that's mint. I'll say that's pretty cool. That's whack. What do you mean? That's What, what does that mean? Oh, my God. Never mind. You don't know. You youngins. You youngins don't know. And then they talk. I was talking to us and I'm like, what are you saying? What? No cap? What? Sigma? What does that mean? You know, so again, I'm learning. Now, I... I have seen you do a lot of things recently, including being the bonus joker on Impractical Jokers. Uh, your recent episode with the guys dropped. I had to pause it multiple times because I couldn't catch my breath from laughing. <laughs> what is it like joining the Tenderloins for these crazy pranks? It's nerve wracking. It really, it really is. Ner- it's one of those things where you're like, okay, I don't really know 100% what I'm getting myself into. I mean, I know it's going to be embarrassing, but what am I actually doing? And I didn't know until they were literally telling me in my ear. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because, again, we I, I kind of – they live there from Staten Island. I'm from Brooklyn. So we kind of have that same kind of family upbringing. So that's why we kind of gelled so well together, I guess. And uh, we shot this right around the end of season 10, beginning of season 11. And this has been – this was like, gosh, last November, I think it was. We might have shot it. It's been a minute because they shoot so many different episodes, obviously, to pack it all in and then air them. But – uh it was it was a lot of fun. It was definitely interesting because I've never done any punishment before. It's the first time they ever punished a celebrity before. And I guess they felt since they knew me that well that they could mess with me. And they did. And as you can see, there was one part where I had to uh, pee my pants. And I was not happy about that. I was legitimately <laughs> in, in utter uh, disbelief. Yeah, they, <laughs> they went had. extra hard on you. The, the punishment was intense. It was all the gauntlet. It was a gauntlet of all the stuff that they've ever had done to them. They did to me in one one punishment. If the opportunity ever arose and Marcel and Q said, join us full time, would you? Probably. I think it'd be fun. I mean, or maybe, you know, at least half a season or something like yeah. that. I mean, obviously we all have jobs and lives and I'm doing other things. But however, depending on their shooting schedule, I mean, we've we've talked about it in general, just saying, hey, you know, come on board every once in a while. I said, you know what? I'd love to. If they want me to want me to be out there, that's great. I would never take anything away from them in the sense of I'm not like the fifth joker. But you know what? If you want me to be out there as part of it, because, again, they're great guys. I've done stuff for them. They've done stuff for me. They're, they're just a bunch of great guys. They really are. It's just it's we gelled, like I said, really well together. It was like we were friends, you know, in a past life of some sort. And, you know, I, I, again, even though I don't work with them that much every now and then, but every other day I'm talking at least one of them. You know, every once in a while I've talked to, you know, literally just – Yesterday, I actually asked for the episode. It was Mur texted him? I said, "Hey, can you send me the link for the episode because I don't even have it." So you know him, and then Q we see every year. I see him usually. I'll try to see him uh, during uh, Halloween Horror Nights at mm-hmm. Universal. Me and him try to do it every year together as well. So yeah, I mean, we it's funny. We will each of us hang out individually in odd times. You've done Dancing with the Stars. You've done The Mass Singer. Is there any other reality television shows that you would love to tackle next? Um. Not that I know of, unless it comes out or something that comes out fun. I like to do, I've always been like the guinea pig of the new Mm -hmm. shows. I did Dance with the Stars season four. I did Mass Singer very first season. So I think those are always fun because you just never know. I like doing the first ones, believe it or not. Kind of get it out of the way and they test it out. Mm -hmm. And I think those are just, for some reason, it's actually kind of fun because you get to see how they work out the kinks and what they do for the next seasons to come if it becomes popular. So again, you know, with with Mass Singer, you know, it, it... it went to this huge elaborate thing where they started doing all these different crazy other things as well. I mean, if you look at the first season up until now, how much bigger it's gotten, how many theme nights do they have now and stuff like that, where back in the day it was just sing the song, let's see what happens. You know, be the rabbit. I was like, I don't even know what the heck that meant. So that's why I had a twitch. <laughs> it was so much fun. I, I'm a huge reality show fan. So I, I'm here for whatever show comes next. It's a blast. It's a blast. Yeah. Yeah, if they, it's a they, new if it's a new upcoming show or something comes out where it's something appealing to me, I, I will do it. You know, that's the fun part about what I get to do now. I'm not – the greatest thing about me is it's not like – and I know some people are like, oh, man, he might have needed the money to do that. Look at him do the mess Singer. And it's like, no, I want to do it because it's fun. It's challenging, and who cares? It's not my – it's like Dancing with the Stars is not my career. You know what right. I mean? It's it's part of something that I – that I a competition that was fun to do, 
And, you know, just like anything, if I was out to go to an audition, that would be something fun to do. And, and I did it. You know, that's I think for me, it's just to challenge myself to do different things like that is, is, is entertaining to me, I guess. Now, as someone who grew up in the 90s, it is a great honor talking to one of the members of one of the greatest boy bands of all time in sync. <laughs> What is it like having the legacy continue to be a major part of your life? You know what? It's amazing. It's it's amazing that, you know, you, you know that music is a, is, a, is a standard test of time. You know, it, it, it music is universal. Uh, it, it, it goes on to generations now, especially in that we have so much access to other musics of the mm -hmm. world. You know, you have Pandora, you have Spotify, you have all these other access places where back in the day, you'd actually have to go get it from an import or a CD to bring it over into the states uh and now you don't have to do that it's just it's a quick easy let's look it up and i think what's cool about that is is being able to be part of that where we are still now listened to even though we haven't come out with really a lot of a lot of stuff as far as in sync is concerned obviously we did trolls three and right. and the song on justin's album but we haven't in sync has not done an album but yet the fan base is still there it's pretty amazing you know and it's it's kind of cool and i think that's why you know I do the shows like me and AJ are doing because it's kind of thanking the fans for being with us all these years. And it's actually kind of cool to see doing the shows that I'm doing where you see Backstreet Boy fans and NSYNC fans together in the same crowd, which is so much fun. And people that were never maybe a fan of myself become a fan or the same thing with AJ. People have come to our shows and said, oh, my gosh, you know what? I was never a Backstreet Boys fan. I always thought they were lame. But I love the songs, but I love how you did it with this. And I love the spinoff on that. And now I'm, I'm a big fan of AJ or vice versa. People are like, I didn't like Joey. I wasn't a big fan of NSYNC. But now that I saw you with AJ, it, it, it opened up a whole different light to me. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It would be such like a big dream to have like a one night only Battle of the Boy Band, right? NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. I, I'd pay all the money I had just to go see that because <laughs> well, listen, it was, you hey, guys were... It, it was a big part of my growing up in life. So it's so cool to see how you and AJ are doing um, a legendary night alongside each other. What has it like been touring and, and just having fun on stage? That's the, that's the cool thing about it. I think that's what's so much fun about this is we are just having fun. You know, for us, it's, it's one of those things where we're both hams. We're both cheese balls. We love to perform. We love to entertain you know, these things we don't really have to do, these these performances, we like to do them, we want to do them. You know, again, it's it's a mashup of NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, and we kind of bring you on this journey and do all these kind of different fun things. And it's just, it's, you know, even, again, when I just I told you I was uh, in New York and then I was in L.A. for Disney, and me and I went with AJ and his kids, and, he, and I went with my kids. We went on, uh, we were at Disney together, uh, walking around the park, literally Saturday. We were out there Saturday together. So it doesn't just take place on stage. We're, we're friends as well, you know, off stage, which is kind of cool. You know, we're able to, hey, man, are you in town? Let's go. Let's get together. Because I'm learning more and more about him and, and, and never knew in depth of, of him and himself and and the demons he's fought back in the day, you know, that kind of thing with his addiction and things like that, which I've never had anything like dealt like that. I never dealt with depression or anything like that. So I didn't know, you know, I know people that had it, but you don't really get yeah. that in-depth conversation. So talking with him has definitely opened up my eyes about a lot of different things and, 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 and learning from him on that on that level, which is pretty cool. Now, in the commercial, there's a little uh, reference to NSYNC. Does Chloe know how big of a deal it is to have a dad who was part of NSYNC? I think she didn't know until, and she's a huge, she was a huge uh, Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres fan and mm -hmm. watched the show all the time. And then I guess it was a big deal when we did the Star on the Walk of Fame and then she saw Ellen go up and talk about us you know somebody that she actually watched and you know thought of as a celebrity in a sense of daddy not being a celebrity that's just daddy so it was one of those in the fans to see that many people come out for us as a group was a completely eye-opener for us i think for her she she knew it but she didn't i don't think she knew like the magnitude of it and i think both my kids were kind of like this is interesting you know they knew dad from watching videos but not live and seeing the reaction of fans to us, you know, you see it like once or twice or two little, little a group of people or something like that, not hundreds and thousands, which is crazy. Well, we are getting very close to back to school. We are going to ask you one last question. What's the biggest piece of advice you can offer parents ahead of back to school, back to school season? Don't stress. Listen to your kid, though, too, as well. You know, don't stress about things. And, and just like I said, you know, getting looking good or just feeling good. It could be the, the littlest thing, you know, even back in the day, I'm just in my mind even reverting it to like Dumbo to when you give him the feather so he can fly and gave him the courage to fly. It's that kind of thing. 
wearing the, 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 the outfit or something that the kid wanted to wear or getting a new haircut, like we were saying, you know, getting that new cut is able just to make them feel good about themselves and make them feel great about themselves and, and to kind of go, hey, you know what? It's my start of a new year. Because sometimes some of these kids are, are actually even going into new schools or they may have traveled and them going somewhere. So they want to make a good impression. And I, and I think that's that really sets the bar for a lot of kids, you know, a lot, and I'm not saying that they're going to fail, but, you know, giving them that that confidence and that boost will definitely help them, I think, in, in their career. And you always see that with a lot of statistics nowadays, you know, you give them somebody where you boost their energy and say, hey, you can do it as opposed to I'm not sure if you can do that. Good luck. Take the test. You know, you want to you want to boost them up a little bit, yeah. you know, so give them the confidence they need. You know, like I said, you know, right now, even, you know, Great Clips is great because they're giving away 24,000 uh, haircuts. You just go on the website and sign up. And the cool thing about that is, is they can get a free fresh cut. You can also go on there, look at the dictionary, know what the heck they're talking about. If they're talking about Riz or, you know, uh, uh, in 4K and all this other kind of weird stuff that I have no idea still what the definitions are. But again, it's one of those things of, you know, listen to your kids. They, they, you know, remember how you were when you were back at school and what happened to you where they were kids either praising you, were they picking on you, were they bullying you? Or were they just, you know, just cool and chill and say, hey, I like those new sneakers or hey, I like that haircut that you got. That's pretty that's pretty bad. That's cool. You know, I don't think they say bad or dope. They said whatever it is. That's no cap. And that's Riz, I guess, or whatever they say. So, yeah, again, and that's that's really what it's all about. You know, listening to your kids and, and, and you know, make them comfortable, you know, and, and the first day of school can be tough. It can be tough. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for chatting and congratulations on the campaign. No it was so much fun and hopefully I'll get thank to you, thank you. tour soon. Appreciate it. Yes. Keep the fingers crossed. Me and you both. Trust me. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.